So last week I was on TV, actual real TV. I guess this is TV too, YouTube, but I was on AMC's Talking Dead with Chris Hardwick, which is the after show of Walking Dead. And I've been a fan of Walking Dead since the very first season. And I've been watching Talking Dead since it's been on. People asked me that saw it, how do you even... How are you even related with the show? Is it because of Atlanta? Were you a walker on one of the episodes? A walker is a zombie, okay, if you know anything about the show. Chris actually explains how we met. Rick Beato has the most amazing music YouTube channel. Uh, I've been a fan of it for years. Uh, we became pals because I found out that Rick was a fan of... Uh, of The Walking Dead, and it's just so great. It's so great to have you here. As a Thanks, guitar Chris. student <laughs> and a music student, I've learned so much from you and your channel. Appreciate it. Um, now, being on a live TV show like this is very different than making videos here. I don't use a script. I don't read from a teleprompter, as you can probably tell. But being on a live TV show, it's so scripted, and it has to be because since you're doing it in time, the commercial breaks come on, and then there were three different producers. Each of us are four, really, because Chris had his own producer. And then myself, uh, Lauren Cohan, and Lauren Ridloff, who plays, uh, Lauren Ridloff plays Connie, and Lauren Cohan plays Maggie, if you know the show. They had their own producers, so the producers kind of come out and they tell you what is going to happen in the next segment. And there's a lot of pressure. What was really interesting is to see Chris at work when he reads his teleprompter because you can never even tell he's so good at doing it you can't even tell he's reading a teleprompter he did a teleprompter read before the show went on where he's talking like an auctioneer i was amazing so the the thing is going by there were three little things i mean they were no bigger than this with the uh with the teleprompter text on it and there's one here one here one here so no matter where he looked you know, if he's looking ahead or he looks over here and he starts talking or here, it doesn't matter. He can see it. But he did a read through and it was like an really like an auctioneer. It was amazing. I wish I could have taped that. And it was funny, too, because uh, uh, the producer, my producer, Toby, she came out to me just before the thing started. And she says, um, Rick, um, you're sitting in between two women that have perfect posture. And you're kind of hunched over a little bit. And I said, well, I've been playing guitar for 45 years. That's probably why she goes, well, try to sit back a little bit. So I sat back like this, and which I should do more often. And I turned to Lauren Cohen and I said, Toby just told me that I, I'm slouching forward a little bit, you know, because I play guitar. And I said, if I do that, just, just remind me. She's like, okay, no problem. So anyways, I was really kind of remembering, okay, sit up straight. And I, as I'm looking at both of them, you can see them, they're sitting... I mean, they have, really have perfect posture. They're not leaning back on the couch or anything like that. As soon as the commercial things come on or they go to a cutaway, like every time The Talking does, Dead, uh, they have the after show, they do a montage of all the characters that are killed, all the zombies that are killed during the, uh, with funny names for them during the show. And as soon as that montage comes on, then Chris is talking. He's got his phone out and talking with us and things or or. You know, we're just talking about anything that's going on. There's a live audience there. And then it's like 10 seconds. And then everybody just gonna, sits right back up. And then they, they he goes right on with the show. He's such a pro. He's really such a pro. Well, one of the really interesting questions that they asked me was this. Um, Rick, do you have a favorite scene accompanied by music over the 11 seasons? Ooh. I think the best music scene is... Season five, episode one, when Carol saves them from Terminus and then the reunion when Daryl sees Carol and then the, the music is just beautiful there. And then Rick says, did you do this? And then they embrace. The, I mean, Daryl in the background there is sobbing and that's the music that accompanies that to me is is the best music that I think in any episode, I think it's so beautifully written.
come with me. able to because you have such an incredible understanding of music are you able to watch and just en enjoy it just as a fan or are you in like uh, analysis mode constantly going oh that's what's happening no musically? i just i moved and then i realized that afterwards that the music adds so much that's not there necessarily yeah if it's really well done it can just bring so much more yeah bring the heart to the scene yeah. And that scene is, is the, I mean, that's really a special scene there, too. It's one of the happiest, the ending of that scene is one of the happiest of any of the Walking Dead episodes, I think. When the, when the reunion with the, with the children. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's beautiful. Not a ton of chipper moments. No. In 12, <laughs> no. you know, 12 years. It's yeah. Like, because you always know, like. When everything feels okay, you're like, ah, damn it, something's just, oh, yeah. man, you know, the rug's just going to get pulled out. So I went out to, to eat dinner with Chris after, and we, we were talking about kind of the difference between this and live TV, and, and my friends that watch Talking Dead and are Walking Dead fans were, were asking me about it, about what's the difference between live TV and YouTube. And... I do live streams all the time, but obviously they are not scripted like this. And I'm the only person talking, just like I'm the only person right here with the camera. I just talk to the camera like I talked to you guys. I mean, I'm talking to anyone that's watching this. I'm talking to you, but I'm really just looking at the camera. And then when you have a, all these producers, you have the show producer, you have the individual producers, the lighting people, the sound people, you've got people in a booth. I mean, you've got a live audience. It's, it's really amazing to see how these shows are done. It's fascinating. And Chris has been doing this forever. He's a pro at live TV. And it's really remarkable to me to see a highly produced television show like that. I think it's really incredible. I Honestly, I wish I could bring more things to it like that, more highly produced episodes. I do my best. But, you know, there's no... There's no substitute for actually having a story, a writer, a writers, and then reading it, something that's been very well thought out. Although I like to think that I think my video is out and I just talk off the cuff. So just like when I get phone calls like this during the middle of my thing and I have to put it on mute, but I don't even bother to go back and edit it out. I'll just leave it in because that's part of the live experience. So that's my experience with Talking Dead. My first time I've ever been on TV, and it was live TV at 60 years old, and it was really cool. Leave your comments. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.